if I start telling people about hell, I might just scare them off. Where are you gonna scare them off to? Hell number two? Or are you just gonna sit there and let them burn? For some hmm. reason, we seem to be stuck in our little Christian comfort zones, and don't you dare tell me to step out of it, and don't you dare confuse me with the past. Yes, it's true. Hmm? Uh, a lot of churches uh, won't, won't step out of their country comfort zones. Well, no, of course and, not. And it is written in the Bible. This is written in the Bible. Oh, please, don't. as I said, don't confuse them with the facts. <laughs> You know, you know the problem here is we find in Revelation chapter three that the seventh church age, the last church age, which you and I are living in right now, is a cursed church age. It's known as Laodicea. Laodicean Christians, for the most part, are lukewarm. In other words, they're fence walkers. They won't commit to the yeah. left or right hand side. And the condemnation from Christ himself is, because you are not uh, mm. hot nor cold, I will spit you out of, your, out of my mouth. You're no good to me. Mm. Right. Yeah. And, and that's what we see. We see a lot of compromise. We see uh, what, what some would say, the, the apostasy, you know. So many churches are compromised and infiltrated at the same time uh, by, you know, secret orders or whatever. And well, when... <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Well, that excuse is only going to go so far that, you know, they've been infiltrated. Not every church mm. has been infiltrated. And right. even if they have been, um, I've been warning, and you know, and speaking out against the Illuminati, what they do, how they do it, including the eight-part plan towards how they infiltrate a church and bring it down. I've been doing this for 38 years now. It's not that... The information isn't available. It's whether or not they really want to do anything. Okay, okay, mm. Doc. Doc, you, you touch on a, a, a hot button point for me there. And I would like to, you know, if at some point during this, you know, while we're having this conversation, for you to go and touch on that um, eight part way or eight part. Um, um, series of events that they use to infiltrate a church or infiltrate the body of believers, because well, it's very the easy. Bible. You start, you start the, and at the top, you um, the person um, goes into the church and he pretends to be one of them and, or or pretends to get saved. Now that person very quickly is going to become one of the biggest donors you can imagine. He's going to tithe like no one's business and. Most churches like to say, oh, that person um, is really sending in a lot. You know, we really want to treat this guy special. Hmm. You know, whatever happened to not being a respecter of men? Mm. Yeah. yeah. No? I yeah. don't know, and I really don't care who has or who doesn't have money. What I'm concerned about is their sp spiritual condition and their walk with the Lord. Amen. That's Why true. should anything else matter? Because the pastor is the spiritual shepherd, is he not? Absolutely. Right. So we're supposed to be focused on this person's spiritual condition, not what he has of this world. I mean, doesn't the Bible tell us again not to, you know, go after the things of this world? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, so here we have... You know, so many contradictions that we're trying to justify under, you know, um, an air of spirituality, and it's just not going to work. Um, this person also going to um, um, quickly um, 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 someone who does a lot of work in the church, like he's going to want to teach Sunday school and certain things like that. Now, that's when you really got to get in trouble because most um, Christians... Um, we have to be honest with it. They're not reading their Bibles. So they're not sure if what that person is saying is contradicting the Word of God or not. They're just going to go with it because, ooh, this guy's in a leadership, is, in, um, is a teacher, so he must know what he's talking about. Hmm. Now, the next thing that's going to happen, he's going to get into a leadership position. Whether it's as a deacon or whatever else they, or an elder, you know, which he's not qualified 
in either case because, first of all, the deacons do not, and I don't care if anyone likes this or not, and I'm not going to apologize for it because I will not apologize for saying what the Word of God says. The um, deacons do not run the church. They do not run the pastor. They serve. Exactly. That's what um, the word deaconos means. It means to serve. Exactly. And, and, it, and, it, and a deacon has nothing to do with the spiritual life of the church. They're there as helpers. They were there in the like New Testament no to of the widows. Whatsoever. Exactly. You know, but I've known too many churches that are run by deacon boards. Mm, and no, trust right. me, I don't go to them. <laughs> Um, and and I, I want to read a passage of scripture. I want to read the passage of scripture that you 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 talked about, you touched on, and it's it's Please. it's it's in Jude, Jude three, Jude. You know, the, of course, it only has one um, chapter in there, but verse three it says, "Beloved, then I gave you all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation. It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you." that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For, says, for there are certain men that are crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Mhm. Exactly. Yep. That's what you you're saying. And you know, I and, and you know, this is what this is what amazes me. How does a person who, by definition, is a servant, suddenly um, given authority over the church itself? Mm-hmm. You know, as far as folks, that isn't working. Now, let's consider the elder. An elder person would be, by any easy definition, a senior member of Christianity, who, shall we say, has been um, working at it for um, a number of decades. In other words, they're not a Johnny-come-lately. They've been saved 20, 25, 30, 35, some odd years, you know? This person has diligently read the Bible. They um, may have um, taught a Sunday school class or something. You know, this is a person that's been involved one way or the other and, you know, has earned his stripes. That's an elder of the church. But that does not give him authority. Right. No. The sole authority over the church is the pastor. Yeah, absolutely. And I was just asked, and someone on on um, my Facebook page today um, begged the question, um, should females be pastors? <laughs> and I'm going to say this again, folks, and whether you like it or not, Here's what the Bible says. No. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. One simple Absolutely. answer. One simple word. The answer is no. The Bible clearly points out <clears throat> that the pastor, now listen to this carefully, the pastor is the husband of one wife. The pastor, by, by that simple verse, obviously is male. Now, yeah. I could get into other verses, but let's cut to the short and long of this. The pastor is the husband of one wife. Never once in the entire scriptures is that contradicted. You will never find um, a lady in the pastorship. It's always men. The God, uh, God has ordained positions for men and for females, and we are not mm-hmm. supposed to be stepping out of those lines. God knows what he's doing. Amen. He says he wants the females to do this, and he wants the males to do this. Do it. Don't argue Amen. with God, people. You know, I think yes. since he calls everything into existence, then he must know what he's doing. If you like our videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all our frequent updates.